Welcome back to Taiwan. Now, look, our guest today is Mr. Lawrence Walker. He's the press officer at the American Institute in Taiwan. Uh, Mr. Uh, Walker, we've been talking about how does the AIT communicate with the local media and the people in Taiwan. But uh, you have a bigger mission, which is public diplomacy. Tell us more about what do you mean by public diplomacy? Well, public diplomacy uh, used to be uh, when uh, the, the motto of uh, the uh, United States Information Agency, USIA, was telling America's story. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I see that uh, as, as we do it in, in, in two ways. Uh, one is, is putting out information yeah. uh, in, in terms of, uh, of our, our policies, our, our, our culture, our, our values, and so on. And the other part is just helping people get to know the United States themselves, mm -hmm. particularly through ex exchange programs and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and encounters with, uh, with Americans in, in their fields and in all fields and, mm -hmm. and throughout society. But how different is public diplomacy from propaganda? Some people use the old term propaganda to describe public diplomacy. Yeah, that used to be a, a positive term with propaganda <laughs> fides, propagating the faith. That's faith. Right. Uh, in a in a democratic society, it's uh, it's it's important that the uh, that information be credible and that it uh, that uh, it, that it by and large be true if you're if you're putting it out. That's right. And uh, yeah, that's why I say also the the importance of the exchange programs in ways that let people get to know the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, in our society, uh, a lot of the policies we arrived at have been arrived at by people freely evaluating a lot of different information and opinions and coming to some kind of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of solution and some kind of unified message. Mm -hmm. But there's also going the other way and going back and down and seeing the, the mm -hmm. various differences of opinion and the various thoughts on, on things so that mm -hmm. you know the society both in, inside and out from mm -hmm. what it puts out and, and also from from the inside mm -hmm. but in the wake of the uh, September 11th attack you know there's a there was a reflection in American society about the so-called failure of public diplomacy do you think that's the case well um, I that's that's a, a bit beyond my uh, my thinking uh, for right now but one thing I will tell you is that there is an emphasis in public diplomacy mm -hmm. And particularly with our uh, with our new incoming assistant secretary, mm -hmm. which is to address uh, the, the causes of things that caused something like uh, September 11th. Mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, the focus on public diplomacy for, for many decades was was to uh, provide an alternative to communism to make people think that there are other ways mm -hmm. there, are, you know, to to really put that into question and, mm -hmm. and see. Alternatives. Uh, the um, in in this this case, there's a, a strong focus on public diplomacy to mm -hmm. get at the roots of, of things that cause extremism and extreme behavior, mm -hmm. and to not only let you know people know each other, but also to mm -hmm. to examine that and to counter those uh, those particular mm -hmm. ideologies mm -hmm. that, that that lead to uh, to such uh, mm -hmm. terrible consequences. How, how does the State Department conduct the so-called uh, public diplomacy in general? Well, in general, uh, as I mentioned, by uh, by outreach uh, to the public, putting information out there, and also also bringing bringing people in, and mm -hmm. say, um, just just to go through some of the things that we do uh, uh, in Taiwan, um, culture, uh, cultural programs that are that are that are brought out to the public, um, uh, uh, it. <clears throat> education mm -hmm. uh, not only uh, we have various educational models that we can bring into universities and even even schools and also we uh, we try to foster study abroad in the United mm -hmm. States and, yeah. and English language programs that, that, that people can use to get the tools to understand mm -hmm. more about the US and the outside world in general mm -hmm. uh, the information we, we put out uh, to and our engagement with the media mm -hmm. Uh, an entire reference library. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we have two reference librarians on staff and, and multiple databases. So if yeah. someone needs to research something, we can do that for them both in Taiwan and if necessary with reference librarians uh, back in the United States to mm -hmm. find accurate research information. Through mm -hmm. exchange programs such as the International Visitor Leadership Program, mm -hmm. where many leaders throughout the world have, have, have been uh, leaders in their fields, have, have come and visited the United States for yeah. three weeks to a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and through such things as the Fulbright program that, that bring uh, academics, uh, scholars, and, and, and teachers to. So there are all kinds of events that you've been uh, you know organizing. Events, uh, programs, and, and activities more usually than I can keep track of to be honest. <laughs> but uh, but engagement of uh, many levels of, of Taiwan society uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. There's both. I, I guess I, I would say that I work in the most short-term one, uh, mm -hmm. the media, because the media have a, a, a very quick turnaround. 
business cycle, news cycle. Mm -hmm. And the longer term ones are, are, are the ones where they're, they're cultivating students mm -hmm. or, or international visitors who uh, visit the United States earlier in their career and mm -hmm. maybe be uh, leaders decades later. Mm -hmm. What's the key to the success of communicating with a foreign audience, a foreign society? I think uh, the key is um, it's a complex uh, question but understanding your own values understanding their values mm -hmm. and maybe interpreting your values in, in terms that they can understand given their own values and there, there are many values that, that mm -hmm. most human societies share mm -hmm. in common yeah but the thing is uh, you know, a very famous professor Huntington said that you know, through this kind of cultural communication there could be crisis of civilization and so on in other words some country wants to impose their ideas their civilized civilizations and so on in other countries. Do you think that could happen uh, when you are doing this kind of uh, public diplomacy things? Well, you, you flatter us too much. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, what I think, uh, one of the things that we're trying to uh, promote worldwide is democracy. Yeah. And some people uh, will take a objection, object to that and say you're trying to shove democracy down the throats mm -hmm. of people. But, you know, democracy looks different in every place. Mm -hmm. you know, look at, we have, I think everyone says that, say, the Republic of Korea and Italy are democracies. Mm -hmm. But look how the way they function. How the way That's they right. function is completely different given their, their very different societies. Mm -hmm. uh, but everyone recognizes democracy when they see it. So democracy is essentially allowing a people to organize itself and to decide its own destiny for itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think that's pretty well a, a universal value. Mm -hmm. I've seen how it, in various places, how it, it, it changes sometimes the behavior of politicians who, mm -hmm. who find themselves unable to get into power, rethink things, and then come back often changed, mm -hmm. transformed, and better. So uh, it's a universal value, but there are also different types of democracy as well. There, there are many types of democracies as there are as there are uh, jurisdictions and constituencies. That's right. I'd say there are no two. There are there are democracies that are similar in the world, but I'd say that no two are exactly alike. In addition to democracy, what are the major um, are the ma major messages or ideologies or values that you want to deliver to other countries through public diplomacy? Well, I, I mentioned uh, worldwide the, uh, the the countering of extremism and, and to to really consider uh, this. Uh, uh, individual freedom, uh, mm -hmm. uh, economic freedom, and, and, and specifically in the case of Taiwan, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, uh, t uh, security, uh, Taiwan's uh, security and uh, continued security, and um, I think the importance of maintaining the status quo, which mm -hmm. we consider important uh, to having maintained that security mm -hmm. all this time. And uh, the uh, uh, democracy we've mentioned at length, and also the uh, uh, trade mm -hmm. and economic freedom that, that allow mm -hmm. trade and create livelihoods for, for so many people, mm -hmm. uh, both in Taiwan, the United States, and mm -hmm. worldwide. You used the term uh, extremism uh, several times already. Could you define it, define, it, define it for us? What do you mean by, especially from an American perspective, what does it mean by extremism? I. Uh, Personally, I would define it as uh, taking your your beliefs or your ideology so far that you're completely unwilling to consider those of others, and um, sometimes don't even consider their their lives as important. Mm. Is it possible that for com for some countries, for some peoples, the so-called extreme to be tend to be moderate things for, in their perspectives? Well, obviously, the people have different values and. and different places and mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah but uh, there there are certain things that go a little too far and I think September 11th is, is a clear mm -hmm. okay example of that and in addition to democracy security peace and so on apparently uh, human rights is also one issue that uh, your country has been promoting all over the world but China or other countries have said that now there are different standards or criteria for evaluating uh, evaluating human rights what's your take on that well, that's why we have an ongoing dialogue with many <laughs> countries in the world. Yeah, dialogue in terms of what? Well, we, we state our values and, and, uh, and, and how we see things, and uh, we state those things that are of concern to us, and we continue to do so. So is that one way to persuade other countries to follow the things that uh, you are hoping that they can follow? We hope so. Mm -hmm. And what are the major things that uh, over the years that you've been communicating with Taiwan people, especially in the authoritarian period, that democracy has been a very important value you promote in Taiwan. How about now? Taiwan now has become a democracy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a wonderful development. And uh, the um, well, as, as I mentioned, the, the security is, is is a factor that the people um, realize that the, the the status quo that that we have, although it's 
Uh, it's not ideal. I mean, uh, the American Institute in Taiwan is unique in the world as, a, as an institution and organization, mm -hmm. and the uh, the nature of uh, of our you know unofficial relations between the the, the peoples of Taiwan and the, and the people of Taiwan and the people of the United States are are unusual, mm -hmm. uh, but it it does work, and so we we like to keep things that way mm -hmm. and uh, and and have people support the status quo, which has allowed Taiwan to develop well. Mm -hmm. Develop its economy and and uh, and grow its democracy. Mm -hmm. I think over the past few decades, uh, there were many many uh, students going to the study in the United States and then come back to Taiwan. They bring back, uh, brought back those mm -hmm. you know values about democracy, human rights, and so on. But now there are also uh, students going to Europe, mm -hmm. Australia, or even to China and so on. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about uh, the possible you know decrease of the U.S. influence on Taiwan? Well, we do like to encourage people to go study in the United States because that's that's the way that they can bring back some of the education, the values, and we have the engagement with our public, uh, our, our people. Uh, we do recognize, of course, that other places offer uh, attractive study destinations. Uh, among them, Taiwan itself. <laughs> Taiwan has more universities and, and, uh, and a greater in educational infrastructure than it had years ago. That's right. Uh, it's, a, it's become a more competitive market. We think mm -hmm. we are competitive, however, and, uh, and uh, I think maybe more globalization in other directions isn't such a bad thing in mm -hmm. total, but we, we continue to encourage people to come to study that's right. in that's, the United States. That's, that's one way. It's not just a one-way street. It's a two-way street. In other mm -hmm. words, there should be more. You know, they, they, we are also welcoming more students from the United States to come to Taiwan and so on. What's the trend? Uh, well, in actually, terms of uh, American students coming to Taiwan to study and so on, I, you'll have to ask uh, some some people working in Taiwan educational affairs a little bit more on that. That's more of a, uh, a mm -hmm. council thing. I will say though that on our Fulbright program, mm -hmm. we do uh, send a number of scholars in uh, to to Taiwan. It's generally if around a hundred a year, and it's I believe in about sixty uh, going to the United States and and, and forty coming to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as, as far as uh, you know, organized programs and such to bring people in, that would be more something that the Taiwan side would, would organize. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think public communication or public diplomacy is one way to present the facts to the people mm -hmm. and to have you know, them more informed about what's really going on in, in Taiwan in our bilateral relationship. So when we come back, we will talk about the current status of U.S.-Taiwan relationship and how we can do to improve that bilateral relationship. So stay with us. We'll be back after this few moments.